وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس وما يعقلها إلا العالمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be speaking about the first parable that Allah Azza wa Jal brings in the Qur'an. And this parable has a, has a context in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the human beings and the, the, the categories of human beings that they are in terms of the iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, he says uh, it describes the believers in the beginning. الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about the believers that they're the ones who they believe in the unseen. They believe in things that they believe in what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells them, despite not having seen it. ويقيمون الصلاة they establish the salah ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. And from what we provided for from them for them, they give it in charity. And this is the a comprehensive ayah about the characteristic of the believer. That number one, he believes in the unseen. And this is the fact, this, this is aslu, aslu tasdiqat. All of the things that you're meant to believe in, the believer, he believes in it. So when it comes to the actions of the heart, he has that there. The second characteristic of the believer is that he has وَيُقِيمُ salah. He established a salah. And the establishment of the salah represents all of the actions that are specific to the, act, to the, to the slave. Actions that do not affect people around him, like charity, for example. Actions like salah. Salah, they, uh, like, like charity, for example, they affect the people around him. But the salah, it doesn't have an effect on the people around you. For example, when someone gives charity, someone else is benefiting. When someone's praying salah, then this is for himself. It's ibadat lazima. These are acts of worship that are to do with himself. And then the third foundation is that the believer, he does actions that وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُ مِنْ فِقُونِ He gives charity. This is representing all of the actions that are mutaaddiyah. They benefit other people as well. And like charity, for example. Uh, saying good words, for example. And so these three foundations are the foundations of the acts of the, of the, of the believer. The belief is sound. He believes in the unseen. He does acts of worship for himself, in and of himself, that benefits himself. And then he does the third thing, which is the acts of worship that benefit others. This is the believer that's clear. These are the people who are upon guidance from their Lord and they're the ones who are going to be successful. They are the ones who are successful. And Allah says about then the second category of human beings. The disbelievers, those people who inwardly and outwardly they disbelieve. They clearly show that they disbelieve. And whether you warn them or whether you do not warn them, they are not going to believe. Khatam Allah ala qulubim. What's the reason for that? Because Allah has sealed their hearts. Khatam Allah ala qulubim. Wa ala sam'im. Wa ala abasarihim ghishawah. Allah has sealed their hearts and Allah has sealed their hearing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, covered their eyes. And so they're not going to believe. They're disbelievers. Those are the people who are destined for the hellfire. Wal iyadu billah. May Allah protect us from being from those people. But then Allah azza wa jal brings a third category of people. And because of the ambiguous nature of these people, this hidden nature of these, this group of people, Allah Azza wa Jal brings ayat, many ayat speaking about them. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala only spoke about the disbelievers in two ayahs. And in the believers in around five ayahs or four. Huh? As for the munafiqeen, this third group of people, who are the munafiqeen, munafiqun, these are the people who Allah Azza wa Jal gave them a whole introduction and, and, and describe their characteristics. Why? Because of the fact that they're not clear. They're people who are hidden. They hide. And the, for you to understand that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the, these people. Who are they? النَّاسِ There are some people, these are some human beings that they say, النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ They say they believe in Allah. يعني outwardly they're Muslims. يَقُولُونَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ they believe they say they believe in Allah and they say we believe in the last day but in reality Allah says they're not believers 
وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون. Allah says that they try to uh, deceive Allah and the believers and the only people that are deceiving and cheating are themselves because they think uh, that this claim to Iman is going to save them but in reality it's, it might, when, when, in the case that it might save them in the dunya it's not going to save them in the akhirah and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the characteristics in this passage of ayat and he says that they, they deceive the believers they say وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ when it is said to them do not, uh, do not cause corruption on the earth وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ They say we're only people who are trying to rectify. We're doing good. We're trying to do good. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ وَنُوَنْ سَدْ تَ دَمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُوا مِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَاءِ They say, when you say to them, believe just like the people have believed, like the believers. They say, are we going to believe like these uh, sufaha, these foolish people? Uh, so these are some of the, their characteristics. Number one, they, they, they try to deceive others. Number two, they consider the believers to be foolish people. They mock the believers. They mock the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, Ula'ika, these people, الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوا الضَّلَالَةَ بِالْهُدَى They sold, they bought, sorry, they bought misguidance and the price for the misguidance that they purchased was what? It was guidance. They gave guidance and they took in return of the, that guidance, they, they took in return for it misguidance. This belief, and so because of their gumud, because of their, ambi- their, 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 their their nature that they're not clear, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives an example of how they are, and the benefit of an example is that it brings it close to the person who's listening, or the person who may not have understood who these people are. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings this parable, an example to make things clear, and this is the the reason for the parables in the Quran generally is to make things clear, to show the people who are listening to this Quran and reading the Quran. What exactly is meant? And so in this sitting, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to be speaking about the two parables that are given about these, this third group of people, the munafiqeen. We're going to speak about the parable that was given about them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal says in the Quran, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِ اسْتَوْقَدَ And I'm going to paint you this example, inshaAllah ta'ala. I'm going to show you this example. And then we're going to look into this example and this parable and look into and understand what it represents. Allah says about this, so I'm going to repeat this example first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ اللَّذِ اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارَ They are people who, they try to kindle a fire. Already from this we understand that this person is clearly in a desert. He's in a dark place. Because a person is only going to need a fire when they're in somewhere dark. And Allah explains that at the end of this parable. مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِ اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا He went and he tried to light a fire. فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ When this fire was now kindled, and not only was it kindled, but it lit up everything around it. It shone. يعني it, the, the, the light was, was, was very bright. فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Allah took their light away. Allah took the brightness of that fire away. They were no longer able to benefit from that fire. They were in the desert. It shows that they were in need. Someone's in the desert. They need fire to protect themselves from the creatures around them. They need fire to cook. They need fire for heating. Right? But then when, the, when this fire finally came to them and they, they started to benefit from this fire, Allah Azza wa Jal took away their light. And Allah left them في ظلمات in, 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 in darknesses, not just one darkness, not في ظلمتين. Allah didn't say في ظلمة or in darkness. No, Allah left them in darknesses. في ظلمات لا يبصرون. They can't see. صم بكم عمي فهم لا يرجعون. They are deaf. They're not able to speak, and they're blind. فهم لا يرجعون. And they're never going to return to this light that they were once upon. They had this light, and now they're never going to go back to this light. What does this example, this parable, represent? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is speaking about a group of people who Allah azza wa jal showed them the light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them the light of al-iman. We find that in the Quran and in the sunnah, a lot of times light is used to show guidance. Yeah, to represent guidance. Light is used to represent guidance. Allah says in the Quran, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا The person was dead 
فأحييناه we gave him life and we gave him a light يعني guidance فأحييناه he was dead يعني he was a kafir disbeliever فأحييناه we gave him life وجعلنا له نورا يمشي به في الناس أو من كان ميتا فأحييناه كما the person who was given light and then he was using that light to walk in between the people كما مثله في الظلمات ليس بخارج منها is he like the person who is in darknesses and he's never going to be able to get out of that darkness Allah says in the Quran about the guidance. He says, "وَيَرَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ هُوَ الْحَقَّ وَيَهْدِي إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ." That the people who were given knowledge, the people who were given knowledge, they saw and they believed that this guidance was the truth from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Was revealed from to Allah from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was the truth, and it guided to the correct path, to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran about light. Allah nur al samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The companions they said, some of the companions they narrated about this ayah saying, the light of the heavens and the earth, meaning He's the one who guides the people of the heavens and He guides the people of the earth. Because the light is what guides you when you're when you're in darkness. It shows you the correct way. If you have a torch, if you have a, if you're in a, in a dark room and you need to try to get something, you need to be guided to something. You use a torch, you use light. Just like that, that person who wants guidance to Al Islam. He's been given a light in his heart, and so he sees with this light the truth from falsehood. Ya ayu al-ladina amanu Allah says in the Quran, Oh, you who have iman, in tattaqu Allah, if you have taqwa of Allah, if you fear Allah, stay away from the haram and do the good deeds. Yajal lakum furqana. Allah will give you a, 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 a th- something that will make make you be able to distinguish between good and evil. This is the reality of iman. Al-Islam is a light that distinguishes between good and evil. And so when they had this light. فلما أضاءت ما حوله this light يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى gave them the light of الإيمان after they were trying to kindle it الله سبحانه وتعالى gave them this light of الإيمان فلما أضاءت ما حوله when this إيمان they were able to see good from the from the they were able to see the good and they were able to do the good ها فلما أضاءت ما حوله ذهب الله بنورهم الله سبحانه وتعالى took away their light ذهب الله بنورهم وتركهم أن الله سبحانه وتعالى left them in in, 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 in darknesses. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that, uh, he narrates uh, from Abdullah ibn Abbas and from also other companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they said about this ayah, مثلهم كمثل الذي استوق دنارا He said, زعم أن أناسا دخلوا في الإسلام مقدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمدينة He said that there were certain people, they entered into Islam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered into المدينة ثم إنهم نافقوا and then they became hypocrites they left Islam inwardly not outwardly they didn't tell anyone they don't they don't believe anymore but inwardly they didn't believe فكان مثلهم كمثل كمثل رجل كان في ظلمة their example is like the person who was in a darkness he was in in the desert فأوقد نارا and so he was able to kindle a fire فأضاءت له ما حوله and so this fire was able to shine and and, and bring light to what was around him ما حول من من ها من قذن أو أذى. It was able to show him any evil, any bad things that were there, anything harmful, anything that was impure, dirty. فأبصره حتى عرف ما يتقي. And so he was able to see what he would need to protect himself from with this light. فبينا هو كذلك. Whilst he was in this situation of light, he was able to see and he was able to protect himself from haram or from evil. إذ طفي أتناره. Until then, when he went, whilst he was like this, his light, his 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 fire. It was distinguished. فَأَقْبَلَ لَا يَدْرِي مَا يَتَّقِي مِنْ أَذَى And so he became in a situation where he does not know how to protect himself from harm. فَكَذَلِكَ الْمُنَافِقِ Just like that is the munafiq, the hypocrite. كَانَ فِي ظُلْمَةِ الشِّرْكِ He was in the misguidance of shirk, of, 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 of disbelief. Worshipping other than Allah. فَأَسْلَمْ And so he became Muslim. He, he submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly, he believed in Islam. فَأَرَفَ الْحَلَالَ مِنَ الْحَرَامِ and so he knew the things that were halal from the things that were haram. والخير من الشر. He knew the good from things that was evil. فبينا هو كذلك إذ كفر. In that situation, whilst he knew what was halal and was haram, what was good and what was bad, he disbelieved. فصار لا يعرف الحرا حلال من الحرام. And so he became in a situation where he does not know what's halal and he didn't know what's haram. ولا الخير من الشر. And he didn't know what was خير what was good, or nor did he know what was evil. This example Ibn Kathir رحمه الله تعالى. Said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of the people who sold their guidance in, in, and they, they purchased with their guidance, they purchased mis- misguidance. And they became in a situation of unable, and they were unable to see anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
uh, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala says about them that وَتَأَنَّسَ فَبَيْنَ Whilst he was in a, in a situation of guidance وَتَأَنَّسَ بِهَا He was happy about this guidance إِذْ طَفِعَتْ نَارُهُ وَصَارَ فِي ظَلَامٍ شَدِيدٍ He became in darknesses لَا يُبْسُرُ وَلَا يَحْتَدِي He was not able to see and he's not able to take the path of guidance وَهُوَ ذَلِكَ أَصَمٌ لَا يَسْمَعْ And so he was not able to hear, he was deaf and he was not able to speak and he was not able to, to uh, he, uh, he was not able to see anymore, he became blind and so this person when his light was extinguished he became in a situation سُمٌ بُكُمٌ عُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tarakam, Allah left them in their guide, misguidance, in the darknesses because dark, misguidance is darkness you don't know where you're going, you don't know your purpose in life you don't know what's good and what's bad in the dunya and you don't know where you're going to be going in the akhirah and so they became in a situation where they were summun bukmun ummi la fahum la yarji'un they were left by Allah azza wa jal and so they were not able to see and they were not able to hear and they were not able to uh, speak what does that mean summun bukmun ummi fahum la yarji'un they were deaf yani they were deaf not, not physically deaf they were not able to hear anything that is good anymore they weren't able to hear hearing that was going to benefit them you tell them pray the salah you can't do it anymore um, he says, I don't, I, don't, I don't pray, he doesn't pray. You advise him to do good, he doesn't listen. That person, how many of, of us in our hearts, when advice is given to us, we become in a situation where we know that we, we, it doesn't affect us. Some when this person is deaf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not able to speak. Whatever, whenever he speaks, what does it mean he's not able to speak? He's able to speak. But it means that he's not able to speak, speaking that benefits him. He's not able to say anything good. Umyun is not able to see. Blind for real? No, he's not blind. He's not able to see the guidance. Fahum la yarji'un. And because of that, they're deaf. They're not able to speak. And they're blind. Completely, completely, in complete darkness. Not able to move. If someone is deaf, and he can't even speak. And he can't see. What can he do in his life? He can't do anything. Just like that, this person who has no iman. He left in Islam. That person, he has, he has no benefit. There's no benefit coming from him. Fahum la yarji'un. They're never going to be able to come back to Islam. Why now the question comes, why was this person put in this situation? He had Iman and then he left Iman. And this is because he done actions, he had actions that made him no longer deserving of Al Iman. And he was no longer deserving of that mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows to the believers. No doubt when someone is given Iman, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam, and practice is practicing the religion, that is nothing but a pure virtue and, and a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah takes that gift away from people who don't deserve it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَهَاؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ بَيْنِنَا that these believers they say are these people these believers they're claiming they're the ones who Allah chose they're the chosen ones مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ بَيْنِنَا Allah gave them this gift and he didn't give it to us Allah says in response to them أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَعْلَمَ بِالشَّاكِرِينَ does Allah not know best who was going to be thankful? Allah knew that these believers, they were going to be thankful for their Iman. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them their Iman and they died upon it. As for this munafiq, this hypocrite, he had Iman and he left. It was only because of something that he done himself. From amongst those things are actions of the heart, diseases of the heart. And this is the benefit of this parable, of this, these munafiqeen. Knowing about this parable of the munafiqeen, the diseases of the, these diseases of the heart, they are reasons. For these they are reasons for the misguidance of an individual. A person who have iman and who believe, but then he becomes arrogant. He becomes arrogant and he thinks all of these people are below me, and I'm better than everyone else. And he doesn't take advice from anyone else. As the Prophet sallallahu told us about arrogance, that's to belittle other people and to not accept the truth. And so this person he had arrogance in his heart, and so it was caused, it caused him to be misguided. Allah says in the Quran about that person who had arrogance. I'm going to turn my ayat away, my, my signs oh, and, and these ayat of the Quran away from those people who have arrogance in their heart. Even if they see every sign, they're never going to believe in it. وَإِنْ يَرَوْ سَبِيلَ الرُّشْدِ لَا يَتَّخِذُهُ سَبِيلًا If they see guidance, they're not going to take that path of guidance. وَإِنْ يَرَوْ سَبِيلَ الْغَيْ يَتَّخِذُهُ سَبِيلًا If they see misguidance, they're going to take the path of misguidance. Why? Because of the arrogance in their heart. These are actions of the heart that, diseases of the heart that cause the person to become misguided. After he might have had iman. Becomes a Muslim and he starts showing off all the time. The Prophet wasallam said about the person who was showing off his whole life until there is nothing between him and Jannah except a handspan, arm length. 
For, and so what was written on him for him to be from the people of the hellfire will come to him because of the fact that he was showing off and so he was about to die he was so close to Jannah but because of the showing off that he had in his heart throughout his whole life he became from the people of the hellfire love, love of fame love of fame people loving to be known and fame, famous there's a reason for that person to become misguided because they're going to start doing things for the people of other than they're going to be doing things for people and not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said إِيَّاكُمْ الشُّحْ Stay away from stinginess. Stinginess when someone is greedy to the point that he wants everything for himself, nothing for anyone else. Because why? It caused the people to istahannu maharim Allah. They started making things that were haram, they made it halal. Because they were, they were greedy. Another action of the heart. Uh, from amongst the things that caused nifaq that the scholars they mention also is music. person listening to music, as Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, as narrated by Al-Mirwazi, in Ta'zim al-Qadr al-Salah He said that Abdullah ibn Sa'id radiallahu anhu said That in al-ghina yunbitu al-nifaq fi al-qalb That music, listening to music It plants hypocrisy in the heart Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in his book Iqafatu al-Lahfan He mentions why this music It makes a person into a munafiq They say that music It, it, it encourages a person to do fawahish Evil, haram sexual deeds it encourages them to drink alcohol. It encourages them to be in haram places. It encourages them to be in places that where haram is being done. And so because of that, they carry on doing their sins and their sins and their sins until they become in a situation where they are no longer able to see khair. They leave al-Islam. They become munafiqeen. Outwardly, they still say they're Muslims, but inwardly, they don't really believe anymore because of the sin that they've done. And the benefit of this, why I'm saying this, and the benefit of this example is to take a lesson that a person needs to be scared of these actions. The actions that cause him to be in a state of, a state of nifaq. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on and he speaks about a second group of munafiqeen, a second group of people who are. And some of the scholars, they say that this group is just a, yani an extension of the first group. The second example that Allah gives here in this passage, he says, O ka sayyibin min as sama The example of the munafiq is, is either or. Yani, this is another example of the same hypocrite or this is an example of a different type of munafiq different type of person who comes under this category of munafiqeen but it's a lighter category and this is what Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala says is stronger other scholars they say no this is just an exa- another example of the same person who has no disbelief in his heart but in reality uh, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala says that Allah Azza wa Jal gives an example of um, these, this other group of munafiqeen now, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala says, وَهَذَا مَثَلٌ آخر. This is another example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives for a different group. ضَرَبَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لِضَرْبٍ آخَرَ مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this example to another group, of, another type of munafiqeen. وَهُمْ قَوْمٌ Who are they? They are people يُظْهِرُ أو يَظْهَرُ لَهُمُ الْحَقُّ تَارَ Sometimes the truth becomes clear to them. وَيَشُكُونَ تَارَ And sometimes they become doubtful about Islam, the truth. أخرى, فَقُلُوبُهُمْ فِي حَالِ شَكِّيهِمْ وَكُفْرِيهِمْ وَتَرَدُّدِهِمْ And so their hearts, they become just like uh, in, in this situation of, of, of doubts and their hearts have, uh, yeah, they, 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 they have this belief in, in their heart. كَصَيِّبٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ It's like rain in the sky. Allah says about the second example is كَصَيِّبٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ It's like rain above a person. Directly above you there's rain falling down. أو كَصَيِّبٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ فِيهِ ظُلُمَاتٍ In this uh, in this cloud of rain, there's darknesses. There's darknesses. And there's thunder and there's lightning. Thunder is the sound. The loud sound of storm of thunder. Hmm? And also there's lightning. The, the light that you can see. What's the, what's the, what does this show? This shows... Uh, so let's, let's paint, paint the example first. The person is standing. And above him is a cloud. And it's raining down. It is dark. Sometimes you know when it gets very, very dark because of the clouds. You can almost not see anything even during the daytime. So what about when it's nighttime? Darkness, complete darkness. And there's rain falling down. And there's thunder and there's lightning also in this cloud. So sometimes there's a bit of light. The person is in complete darkness. But sometimes there's a bit of light. As opposed to the previous munafiq. He had no light anymore. There was no light around him. And he couldn't even see because he was, he was deaf. He was mute. He wasn't able to speak and he was blind. But this group of munafiq, they can see sometimes. 
There's rain above them, and there's things that are coming. There's some rain, and it's beneficial, but they don't know it's beneficial. أو كصيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذان من الصواعق. This munafiq, this person, what did he do? He's in the desert, and he put his fingers in his ears. Why? Because of the loud sounds of the sawaq of these of these thunderstorms. These loud storms, they, they, they scare him and they put fazah, they put horror into this person's heart, into this munafiq. Huh? Because they're scared to die from this line from this lightning. And Allah says, Wallahu muhitum bil kafirin. Allah is all encompassing of these disbelievers. Allah carries on and he says about this person, Yakadul Barku Yaqtafu Abasarahum. The the lightning almost takes away their sight because it's so bright and it shocks them and it hits right in front of them and they see it. Yakadul Barku it almost takes away their eyes and makes them blind. Yaqtafu Abasarahum. Kullama Adaa lahum. But when this lightning does come, he sees something because the lightning is light in the, at the end of the day. He sees something. And so he moves forward. Mashofi, they walk a little bit. They have a little bit of guidance. But when it, comes, when it becomes dark again, قاموا, they, stand, they stand up. They don't do anything. They still have their, their fingers in their ears and they're just standing up. Not moving, not moving forward. And if Allah wanted to, He would take away their eyes. Allah would take away their hearing and their eyes. Allah has power over everything. Allah has power over everything. This example is, for, is, is, is the person. This rain, it represents, and this thunder, it represents the Qur'an, the mu'kam, mu'kam al-Qur'an, the clear Qur'an, when it comes to them, and they see it, they see this light, sometimes what happens to them? The light, it, and, and the munafiq, naturally, how is he, he's always scared, يحسبون, as Allah says in Surah Al-Munafiqun, يحسبون كل صيحة عليهم, they're always scared, they think that every call, everyone's talking about them, that's what they assume. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لو وجد, لو وجد, لو يجدون ملجأ أو مغارات أو مدخلة لو ولو إليه و... If they were able to find a way out of going and fighting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they would be cowards and they would fight with they would go and they would, they would run away If they find a malja, somewhere, some, from, someone to protect them But they don't want to go and fight with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they're cowards They would rather go and be hidden and go and hide That's why they, they put in their fingers in their ears Why though? Because of this, this lightning that's come This lightning represents the Qur'an and the, the guidance that comes down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rain represents the, 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 the Qur'an as well represents the Qur'an that's coming down and this Qur'an is so strong that sometimes it almost makes them blind because of how weak their iman is because how weak their eyes are the Qur'an when it comes to them it almost takes, they almost become blind, they leave al-Islam when, and this gives the example of who? someone who is told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said such and such and what, what does he say? he doesn't say I've submitted to the command of Allah he said, how? Question the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how is Allah allowing that? How is that halal? How is that haram? Why do I have to do this? Why is it obligatory? This light almost takes away the iman. Someone who's questioning the religion of Allah azza wa jal, that's his iman being in question right there. Just like his eyesight is about to be taken away from the guidance. Allah said it's halal. And that, that, the, 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 the fact that it's halal, or the fact that this is obligatory upon you to do, or the fact that this is haram upon you to do, Almost, almost makes that munafiq, this person, leave al-Islam. يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ يَخْطَفُ أَبْصَارُهُمْ كُلَّمَا أَضَاءَ لَهُمْ But sometimes when it, that, that lightning comes and it brings some light, because you know when there's lightning, there's a little bit of light around you. He walks, sometimes he gets a, a bit of iman. He gets a little bit of iman, he's still a Muslim, still maybe tries to do something. And sometimes when it becomes dark, قَامُوا they stand still. This is the example of the person, he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's good times. When it's good times, he worships Allah, yes. Sometimes he does it. He gets a little bit of iman, he worships Allah. Allah says about that person in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ From amongst the people are those who worship Allah on the cliff edge. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ يَطْمَعِنَّ بِهِ if, he, if good happens to him, he's happy, he's worshipping Allah. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ But if some fitna, he, he goes through some trials and tribulations. إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ He falls on his face. He leaves al Islam. He becomes in that darkness. Just like this person, when some light, when it's, when it's good times, when there's some light in him, he moves forward. But when it becomes dark, he stops moving. How many times do we see that? Practically in our lives. How many times? Someone, in your own heart, when you say to them the hijab, when you speak to them about uh, issues of, of salah, you have to pray the salah, of obligations, command, the bid, the hijab, the five daily prayers, 
or rulings that Allah has allowed, inheritance. How many times that a person starts getting doubt? Hold on, hold on. How can, how can we do that? How can that be halal? How can Allah allow that? That's, cool. that's, 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 that's close to disbelief. This person is about to leave Al Islam. And Allah says that this person is on, is on the cliff edge. Alright? He's on the cliff edge. Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ And if Allah willed, He would have taken away, He can take away His hearing and His sight. Yeah, this person is on the edge. He might die upon Islam or he might die upon Kufr. And so this group of munafiqeen, this group of hypocrites, they are people who need to be scared of what they, of what they, when they're questioning. Fem, th these ideologies, we have ideologies like feminism that question the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or ideologies like or certain innovations, bid'ah. People, when you say to them, when you give them a ruling from the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it goes into their heart, they can't accept it. You say to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, commanded you to obey your husband. They can't accept it. Allah commanded you, O Muslims, to obey the Muslim leader, for example. It's a ruling of Allah. They can't accept it. It's hard for them. But why? And they say, no, no, but this leader is not good. This leader is a kafir. He just throws it there because he wants, he wants to say that. Because he doesn't, want, he doesn't want to accept that fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do it. Hard for him to accept it. This person is on a cliff edge. Walaw sha'a Allah. If Allah willed, he'll take away his iman. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to take away their hearing and their sight. وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Allah has power of everything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to all those group of people, the believers, the disbelievers, the munafiqeen, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O mankind, اُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ وَاشِبْ اللَّهُ Worship your Lord, the one who created you. This is the way for a person to be saved. So this example is an example that we can ponder about and think about and take benefit that our own actions is going to be the reason for us to go to Jannah or the reason for us to go to the Hellfire. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.